Good morning. Good morning. As this is supposed to be a storytelling time, and in thinking about stories uh, in the arts, it's an infinite palette from which you can gain the possibilities to tell stories. And I thought, though, that it would be interesting to tell a story about myself because um, others are doing it, and uh, it was what we were told to do by Saul. And uh, it's not the sort of thing I usually do. I usually talk about other people because there's so many stories in a creative pl place like RISD. I live them every day. I walk among the students. Uh, it is what enlivens my life. It uh, makes my uh, heart beat faster when I come down the hill in the morning, College Hill, and I see kids carrying weird projects on their heads uh, on the way to class to challenge and be challenged in their lives. Uh, it's like the fountain of youth, this place. Uh, and transmogrifying that kind of energy into a lifestyle uh, is something that I have found myself absorbed with. But unfortunately, um, it has caused me a good deal of, of pain and, uh, because I too wanted to be one of those people carrying weird projects on my head. And for a number of years, I did that. So in thinking about this extraordinary community of people that I have something to do with, uh, and wanting to be one, having aspired at one point in my life to be one, and often being told by our faculty that I was an administrator, I began to think of this disparity between, or the connections between being an administrator of a group of creative people, and what that meant for my own personal life. And in my pathway to getting to this point, because I not only was involved with uh, administrating the Rhode Island School of Design, but also some extraordinary art museums. How I got to what I'm doing was often uh, considered um, by me uh, in thinking about what I was going to do with not only what I do every day, but with the rest of my life, as, as I'm sure you do too. I mean, you, when you think about how you got to where you are, Dean, when you think about how you got to the place where you could command the number of people that you can bring together for those creative exercises, what was it that drove you to do that? Well, in my own case, I've been at RISD since 1993. That's a considerable amount of time to have that kind of charge and regeneration, that thrill of working with creative people. But in my own family, my son is an architect. My daughter is a performance-based artist. My wife is a painter. My parents were both designers. They both went to Pratt. That's where they met and married. So it's in my genes and my blood. And yet I'm an administrator. My pathway to being so was that I started out as a studio artist at Williams College. And they had a very small studio department. Perhaps if the department were larger, I could have absorbed myself more than I did with those experiences. And I found myself studying a lot of art history, because that's where the art courses were. And in studying art history, I got a chance to get to know, think about, be absorbed by masterpieces that were of such incomprehensible beauty and power over me that I found it hard to compete in my own art with that kind of uh, aspiration that I had. Many of you, I think, in going to museums or if you're designers uh, looking at other products, have that same angst, am I ever going to be as good as those works of art or those designs that I see? And so in trying to come to terms with this sense of creativity, I started teaching other people because I began to apply those things that I thought about myself in ways to inspire other people to have those same excited, charged moments of creativity. Think about the work of Vermeer, for example, who happens to be one of my great passions. Turns out that I began to identify with 17th century Dutch artists and fell in love with the work of Vermeer, who had a, an extraordinary way of looking at light. His whole art is about light and the intimacy of light on those objects and people on which it fell. And on the other end of the scale, in the 20th century, the work of Andy Warhol, whose, whose energy was created by the intersection of industrial art and uh, advertising and his own genius of connecting those with some of the larger questions of life. Where was society going, is what Warhol asks in many ways in these challenging ob uh, ideas that he portrays. So Basquiat, a man who was able to take a lot of contemporary art and regenerate it, through his interest in jazz, his African-American heritage, into these very perplexing graffiti-like paintings 
that are really quite aggressively describing the urban scene in today's life. Or Anne Hamilton, whose environments ask these ineffable questions about the passageway between dream and reality, between object and irrational substance. And Christo, whose large-scale wrappings of things causes us to look at our environment, at our history, at architecture, at nature in very different ways. Christo and Jean-Claude have been honored by RISD, and our students certainly have learned from what they do. Walking through Central Park recently, I'm sure those of you who had a chance to have ex that experience understand the way in which the transformative eye of an artist and what they do in palpable substance and the materials they choose can change your life and mind. And Jenny Holzer, who this very weekend is coming to Providence, on the side of 15 Westminster, right across this, the place from our main campus as RISD has moved into downtown, Jenny Holzer is going to project for th four nights on that building her art like this and also on City Hall. She's going to put uh, her own uh, sayings on City Hall in the same way. So come out, see that this weekend. This is a way of our celebrating RISD's new library. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, plug, plug. <laughs> Here we are with the smart car, another great design. Uh, some of Noguchi's furniture. Townsend and Goddard, Rhode Island artists who made great furniture. Uh, and Goddard, uh, uh, sorry, Gorham. Where does innovation come from, I kept asking myself, from all these talented people and from this art history? It comes from inspiration. It comes from wanting to make things, wanting to see things in a new way and share those ideas with other people. It comes from that personal passion, from a firm and genuine belief you can't make great art if you only know how to make it. You've got to be able to believe it and feel it and breathe it and absorb from society into your message and also have an open and receptive mind. So obviously, great art can teach us about innovation because it's innovation itself made manifest. And so in my art history career, thinking about other great artists, I thought about what innovation can be taught from Rembrandt from observing the observed observing. Here are these doctors looking at natural life and substance in the same way that Rembrandt had to do to come to terms with how to paint the human body. But we can learn so much by his technique and the way in which he applies the paint that adds up to this dramatic moment in that scene. Hello. And more recently, Rauschenberg, who, like Basquiat, takes the rude substances of contemporary life, rags, bits of paper, images from magazines and photographs, and puts them together in this collage of experience and color that excites us to see the world in a new way. Applying those concepts of art and design to an art school is what I found myself doing through observation of what our students need and the educational climate and the world outside that they will confront when they graduate. Through the context of contemporary life, through the use of spiral thinking, not linear thinking, not left brain thinking, but right brain thinking. How do we apply that and make it manifest in our curriculum? To be able to tell people how to solve problems, to have respect for materials and their sources, to be careful about the environment and nature, to think about interactivity and the interconnections that we've heard in our recent speeches in this hall about the integration of our own curriculum at RISD to build content and meaning and substance in our, in our educational program. Starting with the development of skills in a particular medium, pushing those with all those other aspects of, of uh, contemporary life and connection to something greater. And I began to realize in the end that rather than being an administrator, perhaps I was after all an artist and that RISD was my work of art. And that epiphany happened in thinking about people who make films or Kurt Columbus who was a theater director in which that process of bringing people together for a creative moment allowed us to, as a faculty and a staff to do those things. The mission of the institution like RISD is the meaning of the work of art. It's what all those things add up to not just on our campus but beyond with our alumni with those companies we work with and so on. Our faculty and curators are like the actors in the play. They're the ones who dramatize this mission. Then there's the administrative staff 
who are like the film crew who design the sets, who make sure that the budgets work, all this stuff coming together. And the audiences, obviously, are our students and the audiences who come to the museum to experience it. Steven Spielberg is the ideal example. He's an extraordinary administrator, but he is the progenitor of an entire institution of people who come together to make great films, like Schindler's List. The actors are only one part of it, but the stage sets, the lighting, the cinematography, the costumes, all of those things in that complex organization of people creates a work of art. That also is what happens in all of your companies, in all of the institutions you work for. You can be an artist as well. The graphic designers that put out those movie posters. So the results of innovative thinking in a creative institution that itself could be a work of art are the trustees that we've transformed at RISD from being a local group to an international group to bring all those resources to us. The transformation of the campus that has brought us downtown into the world at large. Our campus is now global to sponsored studios that help connect companies and institutions with us in creative ways. Negotiating our tax base so that RISD could become and lead other colleges and universities in our area to play a more meaningful, substantive role in our life. Retail branding through RISD Works to show us, to show out in the world what our faculty and alumni do as examples of what our students are learning. An enlivened curriculum and foreign study. Here is our gallery downtown in our new Center for Integrative Technologies, our graduate center. Here is the new Chase Center, which is under construction right now, which is sort of the symbolic center of our campus in which we can show the creation of works of art through our students and faculty, but also works of art from the museum that are examples of those great moments in art history in the past. In those galleries, in our new library, which is opening on Saturday, and I hope you all come to see it in the old 15 Westminster Hospital Trust Building, the combination of context, great historic space, and brand new architecture. Furniture in the rooms for students above, designed by our graduates and our faculty. These are some of the companies we've worked with who have that same creative inspiration, but I doubt very seriously whether they have thought of their companies as works of art. By applying all those principles creatively, that's what makes them innovative working with us. We create an environment where created creativity and innovation can flourish, and then you know what we do? We think like artists, and we get out of the way so that they can do their jobs and be creative and inspire others. Thank you very much.